Hey everybody, it's Lord here and welcome to our first build video. Today, we are going to build a Falcon F16 V3 with a 16 channel expansion board in a bug box. We're not only going to do that, but we're also going to show you where we got all the different pieces for this particular build, as well as the big question, what did it cost to put the whole thing together? So with that, let's just start and cue the intro. Let's just jump right in and before we get really into the nitty-gritty i, I kind of want to lay out here that all of the particular vendors that we may be discussing are not sponsors these are just companies that i have been using and i like their products and i like their customer service so i give them repeat business it's just kind of how i always done things in life and i'm just sharing their information with you it doesn't mean you have to use them there are other companies that may do the same type of work also everything that i do talk about i'll make sure there are links in the description for all the different places where I order from, as well as some of the tools that I use, I'll make sure there are links to those so you can go check them out if that's something that you're interested in. Why are we expanding? Why are we building another box? We already had an F48 last year, and well, we decided that our display is gonna be bigger this year. And we don't do power injection on our display, so it was time to build a second controller, mainly because our tree is gonna go from 800 pixels to 3,200 pixels. It's gonna be a big jump on our tree, we're also going from single arches to triple arches, and we're probably going to add some mini trees in the yard. So we need lots of power and lots of ports in our yard. So that's why we're going to do the F-16 from Falcon, as well as the expansion card. So we'll have 32 ports, and we're going to run that off from four 350-watt Meanwell power supplies. So to start things for us, the main place where I start uh, pretty much when I build a box is I go to JDations, and that's to build my mounting plate. And it, it's a great site. And you don't have to buy the product from them. You can actually just create what you want in their designer and download it and cut it out yourself on your own medium if you choose to. Or you can have JDation cut it out uh, on plexiglass and send you everything, including all of the, the nuts and bolts and screws that you're going to need. And it's a pretty simple process. So I thought I'd quickly walk through what we did for ours. And you just go up to the design area. And for us, we're going to do the bud box, the 32026 extra large box, because there's going to be a lot of stuff in there. And it kind of shows you uh, what's on there right now. And they've got a basic build up there, which you can use. But if you scroll down, you'll also see other design variations. And I always choose to start with something that they've already got in place, which will make things simple for me. So for me, uh, let's go ahead and take this, this one right here, and we're just going to edit it. And their editing tool is really great, and their design tool is really great. You can add a lot of different things to it depending on what you're going to do. But we're doing a, a pretty basic, simple uh, build. We're going to keep the power supplies where they are. There's going to be four of them here. And we don't need this component, so we'll get rid of that. And we don't need these components either. But we're going to keep this, and we're going to rotate it. And we're going to bring it up here. And then we need to drop in the expansion card because there's the F-16. So the wonderful thing is over here, you can go ahead and you can insert an electronic. And you just pick whether it's the, the brand, if it's a miscellaneous pro product. I mean, he's got fans, cups, everything you, you want, holes that you can build, spots for pea glands. You name it, they're there. That's the nice thing about this. He's really put a lot of good work into this particular builder. Uh, so we're just going to go and get the expansion for this. It should be. There it is, the expansion board. And we're going to insert it into the design. And there we go. We're just going to drag it down right there. And that's got everything. And you can add more tie-down straps if you want to in different places. I'm going to move these over here. And that to line up with that. Perfect. And then... I'm going to go over and I'm going to save it. And then you simply just add it to your cart. And when you do that, it's going to give you the options where you can print it out or you can go to their store and actually purchase it. And for this particular one, because it's got double mounting uh, brackets on it uh, and it's a double decker, it's $45 plus I believe the shipping is 10 
So that's the cost to get that. But you can simply also just download the plans if you choose to. Then you have to go and, and get all your hardware. That's the nice thing about these kits. They include all the hardware that you're going to need. After that, we're going to go to uh, pixelcontroller.com because that's where we're going to go to get our Falcon boards. And we're just going to get the two there. We're going to get the, the V6, uh, the F16 V3, and then, of course, the expansion board, which comes with the ribbon cable, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about that. To fill in our build, basically, we're going to go to uh, Wired Watts. I, I really do like the selection that they have and the fact that they pre-test a lot of their components, including the power supplies, prior to receiving them. So that's where we're going to get our, our 10-gauge wire, and we're going to get 50 feet of it. We're going to get two of the 16-gauge uh, power cords. We're going to get one network pass-through for bringing the, the network into ours, two of the bud vents so that we can get some air circulation on our vent, for the power supplies, 32 of the pigtails. And then I even buy from him usually the heat shrink tubes with the labels uh, to mark my pigtails. I, I don't have a label writer in for, you know, five bucks for all 32 numbers. It's well worth my time to do that and, and not have to deal with, uh, you know, writing on a Sharpie or, or printing something on my 3D printer to get that part taken care of. So that's where I get that stuff. And then the final place I go is Amazon where I get a lot of miscellaneous stuff and parts um, as well as some of my tools. But the main thing I get there, I get my bud box there uh, because with the free shipping on prime, it really helps because that's a big bulky item that can really add to the shipping. So I get that there. And then I do the, the P25 glands. Uh, a lot of people will do the P7 glands for the, the pigtails. I like to do the 25 glands because I can do four per. And when we get to the part where we're putting the holes in the box, you'll, you'll kind of see why, because doing 32 holes on the bottom of a, a bud box, that's a lot of holes really tight together. And sometimes with the screw pins going up, you, you kind of run out of room if you're not careful. But with you only need eight of these P25s and do four cords per, and it looks pretty good. So that's how we're going to do that. So that's all the things that we use to get that and kind of show you what this costs because i know a lot of people want to know what does it cost to build this kind of a box and it's a big box a lot of power it's not just a simple one power supply and one board doing the whole thing there's four power supplies in there so it's i mean it's almost six hundred dollars you know so if you took the 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 components out the, the boards you know that take 250 out of that you're still looking at you know 280 dollars for everything else to put it together um so sometimes you know there are places where you could save if you printed your own board you could save a little bit there um there's not a lot of other areas really to save other than that uh, when it comes to this bill that's going to be your your core cost so with that I'm going to pause this recording and get an overhead shot over on my workbench, and we're going to start putting this box together. Okay, so here we are on the workbench, guys, and uh, we did a, a little bit of the pre-work first. So I put some of the screws in the bottom plate just because it's very time-consuming to do. But basically, when you order the kit, you're going to get four uh, number 10s, and you're going to get a whole bunch of, of uh, the number 8s. And you want to put the number 10s um, in the corners with a washer underneath, and then a washer, and then a nut. And then your number fours, these are what we're gonna be inputting our power supplies on. So, with the power supplies, they come with these fancy little uh, acrylic backer plates here, which we're gonna put on the back of these. And the nice thing about these, put this over here, is we'll be able to offset them because of the different mounting hole spots, which will allow us to stack and be able to access everything. So let's go ahead and uh, mount these in. I'm gonna get my uh, right bit here. You can see the four holes that are in there. We got the front mounting holes and the back mounting holes, depending on your offset. So we'll get these all in. And then we'll stack them in there and show you what they look like all stacked together. Uh -huh. 
So that one's ready to go put in our box. So. That just slides right down in like that. We've already got the plates on the other one, so we'll go ahead and put those in. Now between this layer and the next layer, you need to put in some spacers. And uh, GDation gives you some nice tubing, which you can cut into some great spacing. Um, I do use them on the long parts here. But I like to use some that I already have. Uh, and these are one and three quarter inch long, which is a perfect length. I think that's not three quarters of one and, one and three eighths uh, inches, uh, which is a perfect spacing. You can also buy... Um, electrical tube uh, spacing for the screws and cut that to, to length if you'd like something a little bit different also that works. I'm just going to put these in. And we're going to take our other brackets. And now you can see the offset, which is great. Other brackets there and then we're going to put spacers on top before we tie them down with the nuts. And the nice thing about these removable uh, power servers is they're not bolted down to the board itself. So if one went out during a show, I would just have to take off the top plate, undo the bolts, and then just slide them off and put in a replacement. Uh, it makes that process a little easier should something happen during showtime. So there we go. We got it all mapped on. So now I'm going to bring over the case and kind of show you why I cut the bolts. And it's something that you may want to do once you start to get things in to figure out how you want stuff and how you want your layout to go. And these are the long spacers that came with the kit, which I cut down a little bit size-wise. So now we'll bring the case over and kind of put it into place. There we go. That is in. And if we put the top plate on, you'll see what I mean about space. Before, the screws below here were right up against the plexiglass, which did not give me any room to run my ribbon cable underneath for my other board. So that's why I wanted to trim them down to give a little more clearance in there. And if you've never trimmed down a screw, Kind of show you that process, how we do that. Old fashioned wire strippers, uh, which I only use for screw cutting now because I have a better set of uh, wire strippers here. But if you've never done it before, that's what these little holes are for. On the screw, you just find the threading, six thirty seconds threading, and you screw it through, get to the quarter inch mark that you want, squeeze it, And you have just cut your screw top off. So some people aren't aware that that's what these little holes were for. That's what they're for, trimming screws. So now let's get back to the build. And that's going to be working on the top plate. This is our top plate. All these little holes in here are where we are going to put in our standoffs so that we can mount our hardware to it. Just kind of put them through and give them a little 
little tighten with the nut. We're gonna do this for all of them. I'll speed this up here now. And Okay, so they're all in. So now we're just gonna tighten them down. We'll trade out my bit for a little socket bit. And that's the, the nice thing about uh, this kit here um, is every kind of screw size you can think of for working with small parts is there. And so I'm just gonna take, and you don't wanna over tighten them, but you just wanna make them snug because it is plexiglass. You could strip it. So just make it just tight enough where you can feel a little tension. This is going to be the front of our board because this is where we have tie downs to put some wiring. So that part's done. So now let's uh, bring out our bottom plate and kind of line it up and see how they look together. All right, so we're going to bring our plate back over, our bottom plate. Just like that. And then we're going to set our top plate on top of it. We're not going to attach it yet, though. Who's going to tell us where our components are going to go? And I've already kind of pre-measured some of the wiring uh, that we're going to have to do on this, which will help out through this process. We're going to take and put the mount back plate on first. Then you just line up the holes with your standoffs and you screw them in. Normally I would put the front board on also, but I found that for the wiring process it's a lot easier if I put attach the board after I've attached the power and ground wires to the board just because of the bendability of the wires through the holes to where they're gonna line up, which you can see it's pretty tight. Coming in here, they're made to line up with that, so I actually have to tilt the board a little bit, get the wires in, and then I can set the board down and screw it in. So sometimes you have to make adjustments, and that was one I found when I was pre-setting up the components to make sure everything lined up correctly. But otherwise, I would detach everything, and then I would do the wiring. But now we're going to take off our top plate here. And we're going to get our power cords. So we're going to need two power cords. And this is one right here. And we're going to show you what you're going to have to do to prep it. Because basically, when you're done, you want the wire to look like this when it's done because we're going to loop these onto the lower part and then bring them up and connect to the top so one cord for every two power supplies so that is why i love this particular pair of wire strippers because it'll even do the thick stuff so and for that you really want to just squeeze it in there where you want the brake line to be and just squeeze and it's going to pull and tear that rubber and then I use this to continue pulling this black piece off. Just apply pressure and keep chugging it along. Because otherwise it's really tough to pull off. So see how it's doing that? Just kind of a little bit of even pressure. And just keep jiggling it. And then you're off. And you've got your wire your outer core stripped off completely from the wire. Then you're going to take and you're going to put a Sharpie mark 
on the wires so you know, cut them in the same place basically is what you want to do so you get your sharpie and just do a line across you take your same strippers put that mark you made on this head piece right here and pull it Pull it as far as it'll go and then try to grab it again. It's harder on this one to get it to go the second pull. So sometimes you have to use another pair of pliers to help with that process. But same thing, line it up and pull. Line it up on your mark and pull. And that's what makes these clippers great. They also have a two line for when you're doing crimping with the right kind of crimping because you have to have the right kind of tool to do a crimp correct. So. It's a good all-in-one tool to have in your tool case. So let me get my pliers. So then with your pliers, just put a little pressure there and just pull it back. You also want to cut off the tin ends on these with your cutters. And just a little bit of pressure and you'll pull stretch the wire where you need it to be that's kind of how you're going to prep all your lines so now with these done we're going to take and run them through our p5 gland p9 gland excuse me to get it started in the box And that's because we want to have it pre-wired through before we pull it through. There we go. And this one's going to be for the further one away. And I just kind of pull the cord all the way through. For now, and then we're going to screw it on so it doesn't move too much. And tighten up the gland. So that's the first one on there. It's just gonna be for what we have over here. So I'm gonna take these off completely. Let me just make a little loop. We'll put our screw back in the loop, like so. And bring it down in there. Screw it down. So there's all of our wires in, and now we can just take and loop them up to the top. You're just going to figure out how much wire you need, you're going to cut it, and you're going to strip it and screw it in. 
So I'll give it a little bit extra flare there. We'll take our stripper, strip it off. There we go. We got one side completely wired up. So now that they're all in, before I, you know, do the other side, I, I like to check each bank uh, before I wire things into the boards just to make sure everything's right. I know what Wired Watts does a good job of, of testing everything, but you are the last line of defense when it comes to the magic blue smoke appearing. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And we got green lights everywhere. That's good. And then we are looking to see what we're at here. So let's 11.9697. I like that. And right at 12. So I'm gonna bring that one down just, just a touch. And that you do with these little knobs right here. You just give it a little turn, it doesn't take much. Let's hope I turned it the right way. That's a little too low, 10.8, so. Let's see as we turn it, it's going up. Let's get that 11.9695, we kind of like it to be at. Almost there. Oh, a little too much, just a touch too much. There we go. All right, perfect. We're all set. So now we'll uh, go ahead and wire up the other side. And when we come back, we'll start wiring our boards up. All wired up. Now we're just gonna take the top plate and we're gonna put it back on because now we're going to connect the power servers to the boards and for that we're going to use 10 gauge wire both red and black and the reason we're using 10 gauge wire is because falcon's website says use 10 gauge wire well, i'm not an electrician who am i to argue with them we're going to do what they say to use and it's i think it's the right thing to do so you know just like we did before you're gonna to have to figure out the kind of lengths that you want and bend it to the shape that you want it to be in and a lot of times for that you can use just some needle nose pliers and kind of Grab where you want and bend, which is what I like to do. And I already did pre-bend a lot of my wires for this to make this process a little simpler. And the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up uh, the top to this. So for that, let's go ahead and attach our wires at least to, to this part. And then we'll move the plate back up and we will attach the rest. And for this, I've got four wires that are gonna go like this. I'm gonna go up and in. And then I've got longer ones that are gonna go from here to the board that's gonna be above and behind. So let's go ahead and crank these in.
So not to bore with you any more uh, screwing of wires, I'm gonna get all of these put in on the power receivers and then we'll come back and we'll connect them into the actual boards themselves. All right, so we've got all of our wires into our power servers and we're now gonna connect them to our boards. And it's a pretty simple process to do that. Uh, you're just gonna take your screwdriver. We need a flathead screwdriver for this one. And I recommend also having a pair of pliers um, just so you can get everything tight because you don't wanna strip out one of these connectors and pull them off the board. So you wanna make sure it's fully inserted. And I'm gonna tighten it a little bit before I get the pliers, just to get it a little snug there. And then we'll put the other one in. Like so. Okay, it'll start to tighten. And this way I just wanted to get a pair of pliers here because I don't wanna be torquing on the screwdriver and then twist the connector off the board. That would not be good because you want to make sure these are good and snug on there. There we go. Good and snug. All right, those aren't going anywhere. Remember, red positive, black is your ground. Maybe I don't have that one unscrewed all the way. Just a little bit, and we'll come back in with the pliers to hold it on. Make sure it's getting tight. There we go. Those are getting tight on there. Now we're gonna get the top one. This is where I mentioned it was just it was just such a tight fit that it was easier if we kind of push these through here and then drop the board on. Let's put the ground out there. We're just gonna make it kind of snug. But not super snug. snug on that. A little snug on that. Not too snug though. And we'll do the other side. So now we're gonna start working on our pigtails. And we're also gonna drop our case now 
our board into our case because we've got it all ready to go. So we'll get that in. And when we come back, we'll see it inside the box. Uh, I guess I should also talk about putting some holes in the boxes too. And that one, a pretty simple process. Once I get this in, we'll, we'll talk about that process. Okay, so we got it all in now and we're gonna do our ribbon cable. It's got notches in it, which are made to line up with the notches that are in the board. So, let's push it down in there until it clicks in. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna run it underneath our board here and bring it up that hole underneath. Which is why we have the slots cut out at JDation's website. So then we can bring it up. A little tricky, there we go. And we can lock it right in on the notch side again. And you're gonna do it on the bottom one. And there we go. Because this one would be if you had another board so it would be able to flop over. So we can pull this all up and through. And we can tie this together if we choose to at some point just to make it all nice and neat. So. That's our ribbon cable. Well, the next thing normally before we would even put this in the case though, honestly, would be to um, put our holes in for all of our glands that are gonna go through. And I'll show you that process. I've already done it for this box to speed up this build time. So basically what I do though, is I would just get a piece of paper that matches the dimensions of the box bottom where I'm gonna put all my holes. And I would take all of my different glands and I would just kind of line them up. And you can see here, I've got these little lines here. That's where my tall screws were so that I knew I couldn't put anything directly behind them. And then I would just line them all up and put in things for my pa other pass-throughs, my P9, for my power cables. And then I would just make a template like this. And then I would draw the holes on the bottom of the box and drill them out, which I will show you because I've, I've got videos for that, so. Okay, so we got all of our holes drawn onto the bud box and we're gonna use a couple of things to drill today. We're gonna to use a step bit to do some of the smaller holes, like this one and this one and the pass-through gland. We're gonna use this to start with and we may have to step bit it out to make it a little bit bigger. And same thing with the P25. We're gonna use this hole drill to do that. And then to do the bud vents, we're gonna use the big one on the side for the two and a half inches on either side, one down below and one down there. So once those are all done, we'll get them all done. So let's start out with uh, the step bit. And we may speed this up just for saving time. And I always like to spot check periodically just to make sure how we're doing. And there we go. I think we got the size just a little bit more. If we take the nut off. A little bit more. Because we don't want it to be too big. Perfect. There's one of them.
that's uh, going to be our holes. So we'll take this inside, we'll clean it up, and we'll see it back on the bench. So that's how I put the holes in. But now the thing left to do is to put in our glands and then put in our, our wires. And we did the last pass through gland just so you can kind of see that process. Nothing really fancy about it. Take off the top. Take off the nut. And there should come with, should be a washer there or come with washers you need to put on. So go ahead and put the washer on. Stick it through the hole, secure with a nut. And then it's good to get a wrench and tighten it up so it's kind of snug. These ones are kind of close, so it's a little difficult. I just want to make sure that it's tight. And there we go, that's how we get it on there. So that is ready to go. And then the last thing we have to do is our internet pass-through cable. which is this one right here, and that's gonna go in this hole right here. So. Well, there we go. And now we've got our internet. And this just screws on there to cover it when you're not using it. And this piece right here is what's going to make it seal proof on the other side. You'll take out this little washer in here, put a slit in it so you can slip your pass-through cable through, which will go through and then plug into the actual unit itself to make it waterproof. And that's something we get from Wired Watts. It's, it's a nice little piece. So now we're going to do our pigtails. Uh, you, you always want to cut off the tinning on them. That's this little part right here, the little tinning, and we're going to strip them down. And then we're going to attach our little clips to them, which we have a whole bunch here all ready to go. So we get one of these out. And some people just use the bare wires inside these, which is just fine. I like to use the ferrules. I know there's a lot of yes and no back and forth on the ferrules. That's a personal preference. If you want to do it, you can. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I just think it makes a slightly better uh, gripping connection. You don't want these coming out during your show, which it shouldn't even though with the pass-through glands. They should be held pretty tightly uh, when it comes to that part. So that's basically what we're going to need right there. The three little ferrules, the connector. We're going to need our wire strippers and the ferrule clipping tool. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off all this excess tinning on it. And then we're gonna strip down just a little bit of the wire. Here. Not that much. Again, an awesome reason why I love this tool. Two, and we'll get to the third one. Wires can be different, but uh, yellow is data, red is positive, black is negative. Pretty simple process on that. So I actually have ferrules with matching colors. You don't have to. Um, while this is 16, uh, 18 gauge wire, 16 gauge wire, um, I find that the uh, slightly smaller 18 gauge ferrule fits a lot better on it, a little more snug. So once you get in there, you grab your ferrule tool. And you just put it around the tip of the ferrule and I turn it and do a double little crimp on it. And that's solid.
that. They're all, it's all filled up, ready to go in our connector, which we now need a smaller screwdriver bit for. And you just kind of have to look at the connection line. They go in this way, and there were many times when I was doing this that I got backwards, because um, that's just something you'd want to do. And before you add the connector on it, I made this mistake also, so you don't make sure you put it through, your pass through first for where you're going to go and then connect it. So little screw parts go towards the back and the connecting lines on it, if you, it's hard to see, but they are in there. You've got your positive, your V, then your data, then the clock, which you don't need, and then your ground. So it's going to go red, yellow, black. So if this goes this way, it's going to go red and yellow and black at the end. You just want to make sure they're very tight and then you'll just go ahead and put it in the particular connector that you want and uh, another thing to make sure you do before you put them in is to make sure you have your shrink wrap with the labeling on it if that's what you're choosing to do because once you put it through here you have to cut the wires cut this off to get everything back out to put it on another mistake i made the first time i made a box so hopefully you'll avoid that mistake and now that you've got that part ready to go um, we're going to go ahead and get all of them in. I've already got them actually already prepped uh, to go with the ferrules on them and already numbered. So I'm either going to cut this whole part out until it's all complete or I'm going to fast forward through it and we'll, we'll talk to you again when these are all in place. All right, so we've got it all wired up. And one thing I, I didn't quite mention uh, when we started putting our wires through on the pass through glands. Once you have them in place, make sure you put the cap on before you put the wires through. Once you put the wires through, you can't put the cap on. So keep that in mind uh, when you're doing that process. I, I have forgotten in the past and I, I forgot again. So it's a good thing to remind you of. So kind of let you know how I placed all the wires in. It was fairly simple because I've got four rows across the top of four wires and four rows at the bottom I wanted to start in the bottom row because they're going to the back and I started from the center so I could overlap coming down so it had a nice neat appeal for the zip ties and it stacked really well and then I just did the four top uh, sections right over the top and zip tied them down to the holes that I had pre-cut in uh, when I ordered this from JDH and that's a nice thing you can order spots for zip tie holes so you can tie everything down how you'd like and you'll learn as you go. Uh, every time I've made one of these, I've gone, hmm, maybe I should have put this hole a little further back or zip tie holes here. It's, it's kind of a work in progress, but hopefully this will give you some good structure for that. The only thing left I had to do after that was attach in, in each corner. There are uh, four screws that go down to hold the plates down. And then we had to put our final touches on this with a washer and a nut. Just one left to do for you here. And basically, she will be done. And to tighten these down, I just use a, a 3 8 socket on these number 10 uh, nuts. And you don't want to over tighten, just so they're snug. Uh, because it's plexiglass, you don't want to crack it. So there we go. That part is completely done. And if if, if you like this, my wife got me this. One of the greatest things that she got me. Um, it's a magnetic wristband. You can put your bolts on it, your nuts, your screws. If you're climbing up a ladder, you don't have to have screws in your mouth or in your pocket. You have to try to dig for while you're doing a balancing act. So this is a really cool 
kind of helpful tool to have. And I'll put a link in the description for it for you guys. So now let's just power it up. While it's warming up, we'll just take and uh, plug in one of our pigtails. There's that little flicker that says there's some power going through it. So let's go to test mode. We'll just do a color wash. And we have power. So no blagic blue smoke. Everything seems to be working. And a little tip I want to show to some of the new people out there that have never built a box before. Or you bought a box and you powered it up and you've never dealt with even a pre-built box. When you first put your first string of pixels on it, I have a string of 100 here. You'll notice half of them aren't lit up. A lot of people assume there's something wrong with either their pixels or their brand new board they just bought. Nothing's wrong. When you first buy a board or a box from anyone pre-built these are set at 50 pixels per strand so it will only light up 50 pixels because that's what the data line is saying to do absolutely nothing wrong that part all gets fixed when you go in to configure your boards so we have a good working board so all we have left to do now is just close it up and there is our Budbox F16 with expansion built. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the build. I know it was a very fun project for us to put together. And we can't wait to try out this new box with our new Mega Tree later on this summer when we put that piece of the puzzle together. We've got some more build videos coming up here in the near future, as well as the next video out of the shoot is going to be in regards to different types of icicles you can put on your house the pros and cons of each and what we eventually went with. We also invite you to come visit our website. It's brand new, counterholidaylights.com. We've got a lot of good information we're going to be uploading there, including a vendor page that we'll constantly be updating, and we'll be sharing all kinds of Q&As and different things as the season goes along. We also invite you to maybe check out a couple of videos that we got over here that you think you may like. Maybe hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, give us a little like. That would be nice. And until next time... We hope you guys have a great week.